The door is unlocked. Should I go in? Better to wait till the room's owner comes back. Ahem! Hi! Hello! Attention all passengers! Attention all passengers! The Express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. I repeat, the Express is about to conduct a warp jump. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. <sighs> you took long enough, but at least everyone's here now. He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. chicken. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. wrong. <laughs> you look like you were about to say something. Oh, I think I know what you're going to ask. You've come to the right person. Oh, you want to know more about the Express? I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. The Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it, but the Express has no such records. When I found the Express, its memory had been severely damaged, with much of its valuable information lost. All I know is that the Express is an aspect of creation built by Akivili themselves and used to travel the cosmos. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana. Akivili's home world. We speculate the Astral Express started its journey from Bagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. However, 
the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, providing it with the power to travel between worlds. But I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's no way they could have had two hearts, right? However, it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. It wouldn't be possible with a normal Path Strider. The Fallen Eon, deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. In the databank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Akivili enjoyed a freedom similar to us mortals. They were different from most. But their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another eon. I don't believe that to be the case. <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. been to many different worlds, yet I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes. Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary and emanators who are blessed by eons can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. That's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. However, the theory has its flaws. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory there are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. Eons are the most mysterious beings in the galaxy. All we know is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. As for the how and why, even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. Upon ascending to Eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy however they wish, while suffering the restrictions of the Prima Mobile. The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. A cloud of mystery shrouds the Eons. I heard Madame Herta recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them. Compared to the Eons, the factions are much easier to understand. Mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of Eons and Paths. Many Eons are unreachable, but the factions are close to us. After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, people became aware of the existence of other worlds. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the Eons to travel between worlds. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, the Eon of Preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herta who dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. 
the nature of the paths remains a mystery, leading us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. If the person has a strong enough will, they can draw power from that path. Those who can do so are called path striders. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant compared to the eons, like a drop of water in a vast ocean. Sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power, making them an emanator of that eon. I should mention that once a path is open, it cannot be closed, even with the fall of its eon. That is how we are still able to travel across the stars, despite Akivili's passing. Trailblaze is our mission, and the source of strength that powers the Express to travel across the galaxy. Explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead. Understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it. Establish a connection with the new world. Rejoice with it and share in its fears. Connect worlds together, carving an endless path. excitement, right? <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> I was excited the first time I experienced a warp jump too, but I'm used to it now. Don't worry, you'll get used to it too. And before you know it, you'll be a mature and dependable passenger just like me. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. Well, it is a little abstract, but basically you just need to pinpoint what's bothering you. The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might. Really? I've never been able to do it successfully myself. What does it feel like? Like all your worries have been swept away? Uh, sounds nice. If only I could go out on expeditions with you. to a science fiction movie or something. This Stellaron thing in my body. Hey, yeah. Stars? <laughs> I've done stuff like that before. But it wasn't stars for me, though. It was lights. When I first woke up after being rescued from the ice, I could see clusters of stars in front of me. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me, 
It was pretty embarrassing. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. I don't remember a thing. Who I am, where I'm from, my name. It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Uh. <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about 10 minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself and falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you. Uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's over. <laughs> but I'm thirsty now. Oh, don't worry about me. I just want to see if I can stay on my feet this time. Thanks. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. The key is using your core, waist, and leg muscles. It's not your stance that matters, but your ability to ride the inertia. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. Our next stop is a small planet called Eurelo 6. It's been thousands of years since the last time the Express paid a visit. The databank shows it was a lush and beautiful place. But after all this time, it's possible that dramatic changes have occurred. Jumps are like this. They may feel novel the first few times, but you'll slowly get used to them after a few more. As for the mechanism, well, if you're interested, I'll explain it to you in detail when we have more time. For now, just sit and wait. Remember to close your eyes. It helps with the dizziness. has become? Uh-huh. So, that snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Oh, spatial readout anomaly. 
Star Rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven day stop over time extended indefinitely. Hmm. The complex locality of this world has been affected somehow. The Star Rail has been blocked off by something. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a Stellaron, as always. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. Don't worry, it's not the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them. But at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Eurelo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. We've got to get busy! I'd like to entrust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions, and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Someone has to stay on the train or Pom Pom will get lonely. Not to mention, Nanook threw us a glance just now. If we're targeted by the Antimatter Legion, then things could go south fast. So it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for Eurelo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. Hmm? Ever since the destruction sowed Stellarons across the universe, Many worlds have changed. Nanook, the destruction, Yausha, the abundance, Terminus, the finality. I've seen and learned a lot in my time, but I still struggle to understand some of the Eon's actions. Each stop brings its own grand and exciting adventure. <sighs> no. Pom Pom can't leave the train right now. Hmm. Pom Pom's so dejected all of a sudden. Thanks to a brilliant performance, you guys saved the space station from a moment of crisis. Now, the Express is relying on you to get it moving again. Remember, there are four things we do when we arrive at a new world. Explore, understand, Establish and connect. And I'm 
sure you'll get along really well with Marge and Dan Hung. A planet covered in snow and ice. Will I find my answer here? Whoa! <sighs> Don't sneak up on me like that! Why are you still here? Go find Don Hung! Exciting adventures are waiting for us! Are you doing okay after your first jump? Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. You'll feel better once you get used to it. Hmm, so you have high compatibility with the Express. That's good. I went through the Express's database, and it seems the environment on Eurelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. He said so? Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. By normal, I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. As I expected. Before you came, whenever March wanted to go anywhere, Himiko would make Mr. Yang and me go with her. And even after you arrived, I didn't suppose I'd be the one to be... liberated of that duty. I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Eurelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail. Right? I see. You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. I see. Did you talk to Don Hung? How'd it go? Really? I find that hard to believe. Relax. Don Hung and I are experienced trailblazers. We got your back. Well, are you ready? When I first saw this planet, I thought a world covered in ice. Could it have something to do with my past? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Still, the ice that trapped me was six-phased ice. A very rare substance. I don't think you can find it on your average planet. To be honest, I think I'd be kind of annoyed if I found out this was my home world. It looks freezing. Pretty girls aren't frost resistant. What? Is there something on my face? Nah, I was just imagining all the fun we're gonna have here. <laughs> mm. I feel sorry for this world. First the Stellaron, and now you. All right, here comes the Eurelo 6 Trailblaze team. Eurelo 6, we're here. <sighs> it really is one big snowball. Hey, get your own metaphor. <sighs> Snow as far as the eye can see. Which direction should we take? Based on the coordinates, the target should be up ahead. 
Then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Hmm... Do you want to mention the time we smashed a hole through Taikian Stadium? Or shall I? <laughs> Please stop bringing that up. Let's just say that landings and crowds don't mix. Unless you enjoy trailblazing through two weeks of community service. I said drop it! Remember, we should stay vigilant. We know very little about this world. Calm down. Between the three of us, nothing will stand in our way. I mean, come on. You've got a Stellaron in your body. I have my special six-phase ice powers. And Don Hung... Uh, he's got that mysterious past thing going for him. So if people start creating trouble for us, they're gonna regret it. So how long does copycatitis last? Let's go! Braving the unknown? That's the real spirit of trailblazing! This place still hasn't been corroded, yet Fragmentum monsters have already made it here. I fear the Stellaron may be exerting a significant influence on this world. Too late to repent! Reach the end of the story in your own way. meaningless. Everything is ordained by the stars. 
Oh, stars, give these trailblazers your blessing. Fighting is meaningless. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Who will it be? Told you I could fight. This is our chance. Yeah. You. Huh? This is our chance. Huh. No interest in conflict. Scared yet? <laughs> Told you I could fight. <laughs> Here. Let's make it quick. to repent. Scared yet? Huh? Tough luck running into me. Let's go. Fighting is meaningless. The truth of life and death will be the sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Rules are made to be broken. Too late to repent. Scared yet? <laughs> Told you I could bite. to repent. Who invited you? Huh? Told you I could fight. Let's make it quick. Huh. Reach the end of the story in your own way. Huh? Did you see that? I think something's moving. It's just an ordinary snowdrift. Are you sure you're not seeing things? Of course not. My eyesight's perfect. Come on, let's take a closer look. <laughs> hey, get out of there or you'll shiver to death. Holding your breath won't help. I got this, March. Uh, someone's got their head stuck in the sand. Or the snow, in this case. They just need a helping hand. Ouch! My fine fellow, was that really necessary? Is crawling around in the snow a crime these days? I mean, come on, surely. It doesn't warrant a spearing. But then again, how can I blame you? 
I mean, I caught you off guard. It, it had to happen. You could even say I deserved it, huh? Besides, I made a gallant group of new friends as a result. <laughs> Is Captain Jafard around? Uh, he, he's an old buddy of mine. Who? Wait, you're not Silvermane Guards? Well, why didn't you say so? Turns out we're on the same side after all. Pleasure to meet you. The name's Sampo Koski. Excellent, I'll remember the name. Never thought I'd run into friends from the same line of work out here in this frozen wasteland. <sighs> Business is bad these days, but... Fear not, Sampo Koski isn't interested in hoarding. There's more than enough treasure to go around, so let's get rich together. <laughs> Say, why don't we join forces? I have reliable intel the main strength of the Silvermane Guards is being deployed to the front line. This is a golden opportunity. Come now, friends. I can understand the mistrust, but there's no need for the charade. Then again, I know the rules. Vigilance is the name of the game in our profession. It's my fault for letting my enthusiasm and sincerity get the better of me. Anyway, a meeting like this has to have been written in the stars. Ask me anything you like. I won't skimp on the details. Still make it snappy. You're never more than ten feet from a Silvermane guard. Settlement? What a literary turn of phrase. Why, there's only one place in this world where the living still reside. Our beloved Bellabog. The further away you get, the dicier things become. The City of Preservation, the Towering Citadel, humanity's last bastion against the Eternal Freeze. It may sound a bit over the top, but those names are grounded in truth. The only place humans can eke out an existence is behind those impregnable walls. Me? You guys scared me to death. There I was, looking for relics to sell, when all of a sudden you came stomping over. I thought the Silvermane guards were paying me a visit. Seriously, though? Try treading a little lighter next time, huh? If you run into the guards, they won't hide in a snowdrift, and you'll be in a cell before you know it. You really don't know? The Silvermane Guards are Bellabog's soldiers, enforcers, and police. Let's just say they're not the most flexible of people. And they like paying visits to folks in our line of work. Seems like you guys really are new to the business. <laughs> to be young and naive again. How about this? As a senior in the field, which I'm sure you don't mind me saying, I'll give you some free guidance. There are ways of doing things in this profession, and you better get familiar with them. Moving in the shadows, finding the goods, pricing your stock, hiding from the guards. There's an art to all of it. No need. Why don't you just take us to the city? We don't really know the way. The city? Already? They haven't even started trading yet. Well, showing you the way is easy enough, Missy, but it would cost... Be my pleasure. Kindness is Sampo Kuski's middle name. Follow me, friends, and uh, keep quiet. We don't want to be spotted by the guards. So, why were you hiding from the Silvermane guards? Yeah, I was just storing a few relics away from prying eyes. Nothing serious. If it weren't for the uncompromising nature of our civil service, <laughs> there'd be no need for secrecy. So, where about you guys from, anyway? I don't mean to pry or anything, I just care about my friends. No pressure. Rule number seven, never leave a footprint. I have my own special technique called invisible snow walking. Helps me throw off pursuers in no, no time. Who are they? Uh, 
You remember the Silvermane guards I mentioned? That's them! Help me, old friends! I don't want to be caught! It's the suspect and his accomplices! Arrest them! It's now or never! Over to you, dear friends! Hey! Where do you think you're... Scared yet? <laughs> Tough luck running into me. Let's make it quick. Jepard Landau, captain of the Silver Main Guards, order you to relinquish your futile resistance. Ugh, that Sampo cheated us all. Wait till I get my hands on him. Suspect, relinquish your resistance. The truth is life and death. Uh, so Reveal I'm a criminal, huh? Uh, forget Sampo. Wait until I get my hands on you. This sanctuary. It's better vision! Everything is ordained by the stars. Oh, profound secrets of the stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing! <laughs> A gift from the stars! Gotta try hard sometimes! Check out this awesome move! Stay right there while I give you a present! Step aside. I have no... I don't remember inviting you. <laughs> Stay focused! For glory! Just a scratch. Try that again! You have the worst luck running into me! With me out here, how can we lose? Rules are made to be broken. to repent. The time is now. Who's the lucky one today? You can't run! My turn! This ends here! And the prime suspect? The one with the blue hair? Apologies, Captain. We lost him during the pursuit. We can't find his footprints. <sighs> no matter. We have his accomplices. He'll be close by, plotting his next move. As in forever. trying to talk our way out of this, but we're not friends with that scoundrel. Did you see how fast he ditched us? We rescued him from the snow out of the kindness of our hearts. We had no idea he might be using us to get past you. Are you really dumb enough to fall for his... I'm a captain, not an adjudication panel. As a Bellabog citizen, you have the right to defend yourself, 
but that can only take place under the scrutiny of the architects, not now. Take them away. But we're not from Bellabog! Silence! What kind of nonsense are you? As you were. We must not be tempted into careless judgment. Look at their attire. Indeed, it is not in the Bellabog style. Exactly! Uh, and we even have photos! You've probably never seen what your planet looks like, right? I took this one. Behold, Yarilo 6! You mean to say that this white ball that's here, that's our home? How can that... Hmm. It is said that a long time ago, strange visitors from beyond the sky would visit us here. But that after the eternal freeze, the blizzards made passage impossible. And Bellabog would cease to witness such arrivals. But these people are... This decision is beyond us. If what they say is true, then only the Supreme Guardian may decide their fate. Our job is to present them before her. Nothing more. Outsiders, follow me. Bellabog lies beyond this blizzard. Welcome to Bellabog, the city of preservation. That's because you're in Bellabog, the last bastion of humanity. Last bastion? <laughs> 700 years ago, monsters from beyond the sky set the world ablaze. The land was turned to scorched earth, with raging infernos and billowing towers of smoke stretching beyond the horizon. In the midst of the conflict, the eternal freeze descended without warning. Suddenly, sweeping winds brought blizzards which buried the invading legion. Bellabog was all that remained. The steadfast architects built this city. Under the protection of Klepoth, the preservation, Bellabog remains forever warm in the face of unrelenting cold. He's sure saying some weird stuff. A marked change in tone. It sounds like he's quoting from a historical record. Uh-huh. So why is he telling us all this? You wanted to know. Uh, 